This is my modular synth. Over the past year, I've been slowly adding to it and a bunch of people have asked me for an update video. So that's what this is, at least in part. I'm gonna talk about the two new modules that I've added, disting and maths. Then in part two of this video, I'm going to record the modular and I'm gonna use those recordings to make decent sampler libraries. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm also gonna show how to take EXS instruments and convert them for use in Decent Sampler. Uh, some new stuff got added, so uh, if you work with those formats, you'll definitely wanna check this out. Okay, let's get started. Since my last modular video, I've added only three modules, Make Noise Maths, Expert Sleepers Disting, and the Listen For Mixer module by 4MS. Not much to say about that last module, it's basically just a mixer with a headphone out. Oh yeah, and I also added this drawing by my five-year-old son. In case you're wondering, those round things are meant to be musical notes. Okay, first let's talk about the Disting MK4. It's made by Expert Sleepers, which is based in Edinburgh, Scotland. It's actually a completely unique module within the world of Eurorack. It's a little computer. Instead of performing one function, it has dozens and dozens and dozens of different modes, all of which do wildly different things. Here it is being used as an oscillator. And now I'm using it as a reverb effect. And here it is again, now being used as a quantizer. Because the disting can become almost any type of module, it's actually kind of great for somebody like me. If I'm thinking I might need a specific kind of module for my setup, I can often use disting to kind of try it out before I invest in a dedicated module. What's even cooler about Disting is that new algorithms are being added all the time. It has an SD card slot, which you can use to upgrade your device with new firmware. You can also use that SD card slot to play back samples. There's even a version of Spitfire Labs soft piano that's been designed for it. I've had this module for over a year now, and I feel like I'm still only barely scratching the surface of what it can do. Okay, now let's talk about Maths. Maths is an extremely popular multifunction module. Broadly speaking, in the world of modular, you've got things that make and process sound. Then you've got things that make and process control voltages. And control voltages are signals that are used for changing parameters. Now, maths can work with both types of signals, but by and large, it's the second one of those two. It's a module for making and changing control voltages. And those control voltages are then fed into other modules to change their parameters. Here's a super basic example. I'm gonna hook up my keyboard to plats. Platz is a multifunction oscillator, which means it's one of the things in this rig that's actually generating sound. Platz has these four knobs that let us control different aspects of the sound. Pretty cool sounding already. Let's say that I want this knob to be moving constantly. Obviously, I can use my hands, but that gets a little tiresome. Instead, I'm going to hook up Maths and have it move the knob for me. Maths has four channels. On the left side, we have channel 1, and on the right side, we have channel 4. Channels 1 and 4 are for generating values that change over time, and they have way more controls than channels 2 or 3. These middle two channels can be used to generate constant value signals. So obviously, since we want this knob to actually move, we're going to use either channel 1 or 4. For convenience sake, I'm going to use channel 4 since it's on the right side. So by default, this isn't actually doing anything. And the reason it's not doing anything is we haven't inputted anything into that little trig input up at the top. When maths receives something through that little jack, it triggers its waveform generation engine. I don't wanna be bothered with any of this right now, so I'm just gonna press this cycle button. Now that I've pressed that, the waveform is just gonna trigger over and over again in a loop. You see how that LED is glowing, it's sort of pulsating? That tells us the frequency of the waveform that we're generating. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn up the attenuverter on plats. That controls how much that input signal is actually changing that knob's value. So as you can see, there are three controls for channel 4. Rise, which controls the first part of the curve. Fall, which controls the second part of the curve. And then this shape knob, which allows you to go from concave to convex. Wow. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've got the beginnings of a patch here. Let's take it one step further. Let's add an effect. So as it happens, one of the many, many things that Distin can do is it can be a reverb. I'm going to switch to algorithm L2, which is the mono to stereo reverb. Next, I'm going to unplug the audio output from Platts, which was previously just going directly into the mixer, and I'm going to plug it into the input on Distin. Then I'm going to hook up Distin's outputs to one of the stereo channels on the mixer. Okay, so now that I've got a patch that I actually like, I'm going to try to record it and make a decent sampler instrument. Now, the traditional way of doing this is you hit record in your audio software, then you go over to your keyboard and you press every single key on the keyboard or all the keys that you want to sample, and in that way you get a recording of your synth. That's pretty tedious. So instead, I'm going to use the auto sampler that's built into Logic Pro on the Mac. As you can see here, I've specified some specs for my external instrument. The output is Arturia Keystep, and the input is inputs 1 and 2 on my audio interface. The auto sampler can be found here in the menu, and when you click on that, it pops up a box that looks like this, where you can specify the range of notes that you actually want to sample. And it's going to just work its way through the piano keyboard, sending MIDI signals to the modular rig, and recording the audio output. Then, once it's done, it'll have created an EXS instrument that's compatible with Logic's own sampler plugin. So, these default settings look pretty good. I'm going to hit sample, and I'm going to call this modular patch 8. Now, I'm not actually going to sample every single note, which is why I have it set to 6 semitones. So basically, it samples C0, then it skips up 6 semitones, Samples F sharp, skips up six semitones, and in that way it gets two notes per octave. I won't make you sit through this in real time. So our sampling is complete. Where's our instrument? Okay, so uh, what Auto Sampler does out of the box is it creates an EXS instrument. EXS is the legacy file format that Logic has used for at least 20 years at this point. There used to be a plugin called EXS24, and now that plugin is just called Sampler. And it looks a little bit different, but underneath it's the same EXS24 that everybody knows and loves. And yeah, this is it. This is the built-in Logic Pro Sampler. If you go up here, you'll see that there's a folder called Auto Sampled. Here we've got Modular Patch 8, which is the one I just created. Now, if I play some notes... Now, that sound that we're hearing right now... That's not coming out of my modular, that's coming out of this sample. And if we go over here to mapping, we can see that it has created these nice, neat samples. You can see here are the individual notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to do save as. And I'm going to make a new folder, let's say on the desktop. And I'm going to call it modular patch 8. And here I'm going to save the excess to this new location. And this is super important. I'm going to check this box, save with audio data. Okay, so we're in a really great position here. We've got an EXS file that was just created by Logic. And uh, in this directory, we've also got a folder that contains all of the audio files that go along with that. Uh, EXS is kind of structured a lot like Decent Sampler in that there's a main file that contains all the mappings, and then there's a folder that contains all of the actual samples. Over on the right-hand side, I've got pretty much a blank directory. This is where we're actually going to be building our Decent Sampler preset. In this directory, I've got another directory called Samples. The only thing in this directory is this background image, which uh, is what I'm going to be using for my instrument. Uh, the other thing that's in here is a template. And as you can see, it's a little bit of XML that I'm going to be copying, pasting into my instrument so I don't have to start completely from scratch. You'll find with Decent Sampler that you can actually reuse your code a lot from old instruments uh, or from other people's instruments. I mean, there's no better way to learn about the format than to see how somebody else built their instrument. Okay, so let's do the conversion. Uh, I'm going to be using the standalone version of Decent Sampler just because it looks cleaner when you're making a video to use the standalone version. In theory, you can use any version, I think, except iOS at this point. Every version of Decent Sampler from 1.4.10 onward has an import EXS functionality built in. Uh, basically, all you have to do is go to the Developer Tools menu and do Import EXS File. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in this file. 
And just like that, we've converted our EXS file. Now, you may know EXS is a proprietary file format that Apple developed. They do not publish a spec. In order to create this translator, I had to find a lot of old forum posts where people had divulged a little bit about the format. I did a lot of uh, guesswork and reverse engineering. So there are definitely going to be many extended features of EXS that are not imported, but you should get your basic sample mapping. And that's, you know, 90% of the work. Okay, so at this point, we've done the conversion. We've got a DS preset, but it hasn't actually generated a file. So if we want this to actually be a preset that we can attach a UI to, we want to save it. So I'm going to go into the file menu again, into developer tools, and then just do save preset. And I'm going to save it to this blank directory. And I'm going to call it modular patch eight. I'm going to hit save. And you can see here it's created a preset. So let's uh, look at this in sublime text. And as you can see here, it's uh, converted all the mappings over. And uh, it's even created empty groups, uh, like a UI element, uh, an effects element. This is because under the hood, even if you don't have those elements, Decent Sampler creates them in memory. So when you save it out, it's going to save out those blank elements. These things up here, you can uh, delete them. They're really just for internal use. There's no harm in leaving them in, but you might as well delete them just because it makes it look a little bit cleaner. Okay. so. Uh, we've saved this DS preset over to this new directory, but the samples haven't been copied. You have to copy the samples yourself. So I'm going to uh, go into this directory. I'm going to copy these, and I'm just going to put them in this samples directory. Now, if I try to load this, it's not actually going to be able to find the samples. And the reason for that is over here in the EXS patch, the samples were all in a directory that had the same name as the patch, modular patch 008 with reverb. Obviously, you're free to keep that structure. I prefer to put all my samples in a folder called samples. So I'm going to go back into the DS preset file, and I'm just going to change these paths with find and replace. And do replace all. Now's a good time to uh, go back to Decent Sampler and uh, reload the patch just to make sure it still works. Great. Uh, so as I said before, I've also got a template with a couple knob definitions. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab that template. And I'm just going to grab the UI and the effects. And I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to copy over these UI and effects. Now we go back here, we do reload. And just like that, in a matter of minutes, we've gone from a patch that uh, existed only on my modular synth to something that you can redistribute to people um, using Decent Sampler. Oh, one other thing. If you're on Mac and you do get a dreaded like Apple sandboxing message saying that uh, it can't access the samples because of uh, sandboxing limitations, here is a nice workaround. Um, basically, you go up a level in the Finder and then you drag the entire folder onto Decent Sampler. Uh, if you do that, then the entire folder gets blessed by the operating system, and it kind of defeats Apple's sandboxing limitations. If you've only got one DS preset in a folder like we do here, uh, it'll just load that preset. Uh, but for example, if you were to, like let's say we had another patch that was called 009, if we drag this here, it'll pop up a choose preset dialog box. So yeah, uh, worth knowing about. Okay, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this combined modular and decent sampler video. Uh, all the patches I made in the video are available for free. Uh, download link in the description to this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this, it'd be great if you could hit like. And if you haven't done so already, now is a great time to subscribe. I've got a ton of videos on the way. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff about decent sampler, a bunch of stuff about hardware, uh, some experiments I'm doing. So uh, a lot going on in the pipeline. Uh, if you decide to subscribe, make sure you also ding that bell so you can actually be notified when I make one of these videos. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. See you next time.